The ZWO 2600MC Duo is the newest in the line of cameras provided by ZWO, but the neat thing is the reason why it's called the Duo. At the time of recording this video, it is a unique astrophotography camera because it is the only one with a guide camera built into the main body of the camera, meaning that you get two cameras built into one. Now this pairing presents a different approach for auto guiding than you would normally see. Normally you would get a small focal length guide scope and then a secondary small guide camera to help keep your stars sharp. But instead, you can just use your main telescope as your guide camera. Now this is also different than off-axis guiding as well, because it's not necessarily off-axis, it is on-axis. And the nice thing is too, is that it deals with a lot of the problems that come with off-axis guiding, such as focusing the guide camera. Now at the time of recording, it is still $2,000 because it is still rather new on the market. However, one thing to keep in mind is that the original 2600 MC Pro is only $200 less. So for an extra 200 bucks, you get the guide camera built in with the camera in one body. Now this being around $2,000, it is around the middle tier here for ZWO's cameras. There are some that are way more expensive, such as the 6200, and there are plenty that are cheaper. But this being the middle of the road for what ZWO offers, it is a very good camera to work with. Now let's go over a few features real quick, just so you know what we're working with. So if you wanna know what the aspect ratio and sensor size of this camera is, it is an APS-C size sensor. So it is the same crop sensor that it was built into the 2600. The nice thing about having an APS-C size sensor is that it is compatible with a lot of telescopes and camera lenses for that matter. Now when it comes to the sensor, it is the same Sony IMX571 chip that is in the 2600. However, they did tweak it just a little bit for the Duo. Now because this is two cameras built into one, one thing that they made sure to do is include cooling with this camera, which is a necessity. Because of two camera sensors putting out a lot of heat, there will be a lot of thermal noise if the cooling wasn't there. But the cooler that is provided is very capable at keeping things nice and noiseless. A couple pros right off the bat about the Duo is that, like I said, you don't need to worry about a secondary guide scope or guide camera. It's all built into one. The nice thing about the guide camera being built into the Duo's body is it frees up a USB slot. Now where this freed up USB slot comes in handy is when it comes to the accessories. It doesn't matter if you're using the ASI Air or another program to control your gear. If you use an accessory such as the autofocus or the filter wheel, eventually once you start getting all those accessories you're gonna use up a bunch of USB slots and the guide camera when it's on its own does take a USB slot but because it's integrated with this camera there's a free USB slot which leaves room for other accessories now here is a pro that off-axis guider users are going to love Focusing the guide camera on the Duo is an absolute dream and a breeze compared to doing off-axis guiding. And to be honest, it picks up the most stars I've ever seen in a guide field of view. Just look at this. This is a screen from the guide camera on the Duo. But once the main camera is focused, focusing the guide camera is as simple as turning this knob just a little bit. And it's very easy to do. One of my favorite things about the main sensor of this camera is that there is no amp glow whatsoever. So if you don't wanna do darks, you don't have to. They're not necessary with this camera. Now in practice, I would still do them, but you don't have to. Now of course, no camera is perfect, at least not yet anyway, and there are a few cons with the Duo, and the first one is the back focus is absolutely key with this camera. And the reason that I say that is because of some blunders that I had when I first got the camera. I had the back focus off just a little bit, and that meant that the guide camera wasn't able to focus as well. It, it looked a little bit off. But as long as your back focus is perfect, then the guide camera is easily focused and you won't have any problems, but do be aware of that, that your back focus has to be spot on. Another con to this camera is that if you're going to use any kind of filters, say you're using a tri-band filter or just a simple light pollution filter, you're going to need to use a large filter with this. Anything smaller than about two inches in diameter might cause a little bit of vignetting. That is because of where the sensor sits in the body of the camera and where the filter will sit in front of it. So if you plan on getting the Duo, make sure you get some big filters for it. On that same vein, if you're going to use filters, try to keep it to where it's not filtering down so much that it gets down below about the seven to five nanometer range when it comes to the wavelengths it's filtering out. Anything below seven, so from zero to seven nanometers, that guide camera is gonna have some problems. So just make sure that you're using something that the guide camera will still be able to see what it needs to to properly guide. The last con is that this camera uses M54 size spacers. Now they're pretty big. 
So you might need to get a couple adapters to make sure that the Duo will fit onto your specific scope. Just keep in mind that when you look for your adapters and you're going to hook it to your telescope, make sure that the sensor isn't being clipped by the imaging tray. Now granted, I have had this camera for about five months now, so the unboxing has already been done, but it does come with the standard bag and the spacers that you need. And it comes with a couple USB cables. The one thing it doesn't come with that I wish that they would include is those real small, those thin spacers that come with the other cameras. I wish they would have included those with the Duo, but they don't, at least not yet. Now in some use case observations, there are a few things that I have noticed. Once I figured out the blunder with the back focus and I got it dialed in, this camera has produced some of the best guiding numbers I have ever seen. Now, when I am using a guide scope like this or off axis guider, there's usually a little bit of error in there and a little bit of wiggle room in the, gu in the guiding graph. But with this camera, I haven't had any major problems once I got it dialed in and it's all been below one. So it's been about 0.75 ish when it comes to the errors. And once it's focused, you don't really have to mess with it anymore. As long as you don't bump that little knob, Really, you can just check the focus when you go to use it, but you don't really have to refocus every single time like you would with this unless you store it focused. Another observation that I had while using this over the summer is that it has no problems when it's warm out, keeping things nice and cool. I did a project with the Veil Nebula all summer and I got about 12 hours worth of data using the short summer nights I could, but I got 12 hours of data and on the nights that I took pictures down here closer to home where it was warmer, I never saw it go above about 50% with cooling except when I first turned it on. Once I got down to the numbers that I wanted, it hummed along just fine, nice and quietly, never had any problems. Another observation that you're gonna need to be aware of, at least when it comes to storing your data on your computer when you go to process it, is that all of your frames are around 50 megabytes coming from this camera. Now for the 294 MC Pro, it's around 25 megabytes. So if you're gonna buy this camera, double check your storage on your computer just in case you need a little bit of extra room to store all your stuff. Beyond that, the use cases for this camera have been just like the last few that I've used. It is a pretty typical astrophotography camera, however, with the nice little unique caveat of having the guide camera built in. And I would love to see where this goes in the future. So the 2600 MC Pro Duo is a great option for somebody who is looking to get away from a DSLR and into their first astrophotography camera, or if they're just looking to bump up from the entry level cameras, such as the 294 or the 533, but they still wanna stay within the one shot color spectrum of things. Adding this camera to your inventory of astrophotography gear will definitely give you a boost in the quality of your images. If you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, and then maybe consider subscribing. I wanna thank you for watching. Clear skies.